So long story short, after the university, I wanna live here. You have a window to the world and a hole in the wall. It's like cyberpunk color book. Hello, my friends. I'm back again after three weeks of absence on YouTube. I know it's been a long time, and in case you forgot, my name is Natasha, and this is my channel where I tell you about life in Russia, about my life in Russia, and about some other things. I made my previous May video in the form of a lifestyle diary, and I like this format, and I actually got a lot of support from you guys, and it helped me a lot. So in that May video, I told you about my struggles with my driving test, with my Chinese exam and my thesis. So today I will update you on the situation and also in this video I will tell you about some events and places that at I attended in Khabarovsk. Let's start! So now let's return to the beginning of June when I had my Chinese exam. I had to prepare for the exam. At the last moment I was trying to learn and revise everything I know. So I came to the Chinese exam and it was a disaster. At first I was given a really hard text, but then I was given another task. It was a little easier because it was a speaking task and I had to talk about my traveling experiences. And you know guys, I like talking talking, I like talking about myself, I like talking about myself to that extent so that I can even say something about myself in Chinese. So I performed actually well on that task, showing the teachers that I'm not that hopeless. Then they gave me another text and somehow, somehow I passed this exam getting my precious C, which I think is an overestimation of my knowledge. And passing that exam was such a load of my mind, because now I was completely free, I could continue working on my thesis. But then something interesting happened, and I will tell you about the results of writing my graduation thesis in the end of this video. And now I will tell you about some other twists and turns that I have had this month. And let me start with some house chores. As today, I think I became more adult because I called the electrician for the first time. So I rent a room in a three-room apartment with two other guys, my neighbors. So two weeks ago, the electricity in our bathroom and toilet stopped working and also it works only from time to time in my room and in the kitchen and sometimes the lamp in my room is flashing which scares me a lot and I learned that it can be because of the short circuit or the wires can be old because this house was built like in the 80s. I personally lived for all my life in like a private country house with my parents and I've never experienced these kind of quarrels with the neighbors, like with the utility companies. But the thing is that there's another problem. There's a leakage on the ceiling uh, in the corridor near my room. This leakage comes from the apartment that is located above us. This all started to be maybe one week ago, but I didn't know that it can be somehow connected with the electricity system. Stay tuned for the next update on this really peculiar, peculiar situation. But there was one thing that truly really illuminated my day, figuratively. A teacher from my university invited me to the online class of the University of Georgia with students who study Russian. In the breakout rooms we talk with them only in Russian and they ask us different things using the vocabulary that they know. And I really enjoyed each of these classes. I feel so refreshed. I think that I just like the positive atmosphere of uh, the American class and how the students were smiling to me. There's that feeling when you're at home in your comfort zone, but now you have a window to the world and then the class 
ends and you're like what just happened and this teacher from my university she also asked me to film some videos for these american students videos in russian so i already made a video about my university my workplace like i showed all this laptop and you know, all the posters that i have and actually this task inspired me to start one more channel so guys this is the announcement i want to create one more channel where i will be making videos only in russian for those folks who like to study russian see you very soon Let there be light. I was some good news today because I finally have the electricity in my room and a hole in the wall. So that day I went to our neighbor upstairs and I was scared that he would be rude with me. But he was really nice and polite and it turned out that a hose of the washing machine in his apartment was leaking. So he suggested me that he would be paying for the electrician who is also a friend of him. And after several days, they came to my apartment and fixed this problem. I'm so glad that this situation resolved like this. Because firstly, I called to the utility company, they sent some electrician, but it still wasn't free and I had to pay for it 500 rubles. But then our neighbor fixed our lights without any fee and I'm just glad. This is how things are done in this world. In the following days, I walked a lot, met with my friends, and we went to a meeting of the Khabarovsk Film Club, where we watched 500 Days of Summer. And yes, all foreign films in Russia are dubbed into Russian. <laughs> Then I had a little unplanned shopping. I bought myself some t-shirts, jeans and shorts. And for some reason it turns out that my entire summer wardrobe is green. And now let's take a walk through the evening Khabarovsk. I've been walking in the center of the city and I noticed that there is a rally on the square. If you guys remember, I made a video about protests over Khabarovsk governor Sergei Furgal. And these protests have been carried out for like almost a year now. And even though now they're not that massive, but still people come to these protests. Oops, this is my bus, by the way. Right now I am in the bus station in Khabarovsk and I came here because my friend is leaving for Komsomolsk and I'm like escorting her. I don't know how to, what words uh, you use in English to say this, but I just um, like the atmosphere of this place. It's like cyberpunk of the 90s. Just look at these neon lights. After I saw my friend off, I had to go to another part of the city and give her keys to her friend. But at first I mixed up the buses and I had to take another bus, but finally I got there. This city district is called the Glory Square. And here you can see a picture that well characterizes modern Russia. 
There is a memorial dedicated to the residents of the Khabarovsk territory who died in the Great Patriotic War. It was opened in 1985. I really like the scale and grandeur of this memorial. Next, we see a building called the House of Radio. It was built in 1978. Now it is just a business center and I don't really like this building because it obscures the view of the river. And to the left is the Transfiguration Cathedral, a very beautiful, majestic Orthodox church. It was built in 2004 and it is one of the tallest Orthodox churches in Russia. I would like to go in and film inside there, but as you can see from my previous videos, I am never allowed to film in churches without the priest's permission. Alright then, keep your secrets. And all of this splendor is located right on the bank of the Amur River, the river that separates Russia and China. By the way, today is the 12th of June and this is actually a Russia day. Yeah, it is an official government holiday. By the way, while I was on the bus home, I saw someone hanging out their laundry in the order of the colors of the Russian flag. Maybe this is in honor of the day of Russia? And then I discovered that I was going in completely opposite direction because I took the wrong bus again. So now I'm in like district that I don't really know and have to take that bus again. And uh, yeah, it's like the fourth bus for today for me. That's just funny. Hi guys, today I'm practicing my cooking skills and I decided to make Russian pancakes or blini. And please forgive me for my look, I just washed my hair. Just want to show you my results. So as you can see, my skills haven't really improved much since that last Linsa video. But anyways, I also <laughs> want to show you these two funny small blini. When I lived with my parents and my mom baked something, we always uh, made such small things out of the flour leftovers and my mom calls them kalapki. It comes from kalabok and kalabok is a character of a Russian fairy tale. Basically, it's like an analog of uh, gingerbread man. And since I mentioned this topic, kalabok is a really interesting character to discuss because I want to make a whole video about similarities between Russian traditional fairy tales and some other European fairy tales because there is a lot to tell about. Yeah, by the way, this word kalabok sounds really funny in Russian for me. Kalabok. This was my cooking show for today. Stay tuned. Guys, look how nice it is. This is the graffiti of Hadad, that Russian artist who I told you about in the previous video. And his graffiti has been vandalized. And next to it, I saw a poster. It was saying no tolerance, but I spoiled it because I'm just really pissed off by this. So now they see only tolerance here. But it's really disgusting. I see a lot of posters with uh, some like nationalistic groups. And this is one more example. So this is Haddad's uh, picture. And you see it was covered by these like racist numbers that mean something really bad. It's just disgusting. It's just disgusting. I, I think it's just some people who... Whew, I feel I sh it's better for me to not see it. Oh my gosh, look at this trailer. It looks so authentic. I want to live here. I mean, it's not that impossible. And this is our final destination. And now I will tell you about the results of my graduation thesis. So let me take you to the beginning of June when I had my Chinese exam. I was working on my paper intensively and in fact your guys' support really helped me because I got a lot of supportive comments and uh, this influenced me 
psychologically somehow. Maybe it's a little unhealthy way to sedate myself, but when I was reading the tons of comments where people told me like, you got this, don't worry, this is not the end of the life, I really felt calm down, I really felt better. And in addition to it, uh, since the topic of my thesis is the neologisms in English, I ask you to share some words in comments and some links to the articles where these words are used. And uh, I was simultaneously reading these supportive comments and finding some new ideas that I was writing down for my paperwork. So it was a really productive process. And also a lot of people were really worried uh, because I looked really depressed and I got a lot of comments about it. But I want to reassure you guys that I'm okay. This is just my usual facial expression. This is my life. I am okay. So after sending that first version of my thesis, several days passed and I'm receiving a message that I am not admitted to the defense because my thesis was really unfinished and undeveloped, which I agree with. That day, the 7th of June, was the last day when the teacher had to fill out some special online statement. So this statement was already closed and nothing could be changed. And that day, the 7th of June, was my birthday, by the way, and I was planning to relax, to walk alone on the day, but instead I spent that day calling to different university teachers. It was a nightmare. I was sure that I had two weeks before the defense, but the catch is that I didn't meet that first intermediate deadline. So the teachers couldn't really help me in any way. I just started working on it too late. So long story short, I will graduate in February in just six months. And I'm trying to reassure myself that I was not going to use my graduation diploma after the university anyways. Because for the following year, I was planning to live in Khabarovsk, maybe travel around Russia to learn languages, to read books, to look for programs for my future education and develop my channel. I am completely free now. I only have to show up in my university in February and that's it. And this is the time to thank all of you guys for your support. Special thanks to my patrons and PayPal donators. This video wouldn't be possible if not for your support. Thank you very much. And I hope you liked this uh, diary video format. I tried to film it uh, both at home and uh, outside. So I want to know your guys' opinion. Uh, do you prefer videos filmed uh, on the, in the move, uh, in the street, or maybe you more like videos filmed in the calm home atmosphere? Please write your opinion down in comments. So thank you for watching. See you very soon. Bye-bye. Пока-пока.